Hey, I'm Mike Baccarell, and today we're going to take a look at a wide interval concept that Jimmy Herring uses quite a bit. Let's take a look. This concept is something you can find Jimmy Herring doing at least a couple times on every single record I think he's ever recorded. He uses a lot, and it's a really cool idea. It's a really great way to introduce intervals into your playing and also to kind of strengthen your knowledge of the fretboard. So to break down what we're doing here, we're going between two adjacent strings, and we are climbing between two different intervals between those two strings. The way Jimmy Herring uses this the most is he goes up a fifth and then a sixth. And so what we're doing here is I'm starting here on the fifth fret, on the second string. So I got E right here. And I'm kind of thinking the scale I'm, I'm playing out of in my head is C Lydian or G major. Um, but we're playing in my head, I'm thinking over a C chord. <clears throat> so I'm going up a fifth from E to B. And then going up diatonically a sixth to C. And I'm going up to the next note in the scale. So F sharp. I'm going up a fifth to C. And then a sixth to D. I'm going up to G, I'm going up a fifth, and then here in the line I bent up, so I'm going up to the sixth that way. Jimmy, Jimmy does that quite a bit, but you could also keep going. So from G I can go up a fifth to D, and then up a sixth to E, and then go up to A, go up a fifth to E, and then up a sixth to F sharp, and then B to F sharp, and then up a sixth to G and so forth. So I can go up the whole scale. Now you could experiment with different intervals. You can go fourth, fifth. Anything you can think of is as an option. So there's sixth to fifth. I can go. I can alternate between the two. I can go further. And go 6th, 7th. You know, whatever you can think of, it works. And it's a cool sequence because it's the same sequence that keeps repeating. So it's a really cool melodic idea that, that gives us some repetition in our playing. Now we could also experiment with this on different string sets. So if I go to the 3rd the and 4th string. So there's the fifth and sixth version on the on the fifth and fourth string. Fifth and sixth string. You can, I mean, you know anywhere. Now notice I missed the second and third string. The second we can do this on any string set, but between the second and third string, because the interval changes between those two strings, I can notice it's perfect fourth, perfect fourth, perfect fourth major third right there because of that half step difference in the way this string between fifth and sixth is kind of difficult it's a, it's a really wide interval but we could still do it on these strings which maybe we'll just do fourth fifth so you can change it up and adapt it to fit whatever you're doing now this could be also a great tool to kind of help learn your fretboard better you know so you can do this in any key and try all kinds of different interval shapes and see you know how many keys can, can you go up and down the strings on without having to, to hesitate and think you know when you get to a flat you know are, are you still good to go you know g flat you know all, all these different keys can you get through them comfortably on all the different string sets doing fifth sixth or fourth fifth or, or whichever interval group you wanted to pair together now the last thing is so jimmy likes to bend um when he finishes the idea Now, one thing that's big in Jimmy's playing is bending between all kinds of different notes in the scale. So a lot of times, you know, when we're playing stuff, we tend, tend to bend whole steps, you know, fourth to fifth, flat seven to root, you know, all these different whole step bends. But Jimmy's really big on half step bends too, and that's something really worth spending time on. You know, spending time kind of exploring that.
that's a big part of Jimmy's playing. And it's a very expressive band because we usually hear the whole step, but the half step is a really interesting sound. This is a rather short lesson, but it's a very easy concept to apply. And it's really good for you because it helps to explore and see your, your scales in less of a box pattern and more of a kind of a intervallic approach to them. And you can see them through the different strings because as we, as we ascend, we're not going through our patterns. We're going to every single note. So we've got to be able to see each note stand on their own in our understandings of the, of the scale. So I hope you have fun with this. I, I, I probably play this line way too much when I'm doing any sort of rock or fusion thing. It's one of my favorites, and it's a cool way to ascend or descend even. Half step end. So thanks for checking out the lesson. Hope you got something out of it. Keep practicing. See you next time.